Greatest compensation plan. So, Fred, let's first talk about Zango Juice. And again, as cautiously as you dare, because we want to be careful about sharing too much information, give us some of the update on where we stand in Zango Research, Mango Steam Juice Research. Well, um, when you take a look at the, uh, let's just look at PubMed rather than looking at some of the other databases for uh, the research that's going on. We've got uh, scientists in over 20 countries, universities in over 20 countries now, researching the mango steam. They were researched it recently, and uh, this is spreading. It's spreading very, very rapidly. And I would say, without a doubt, that this could not have been possible if the mango steam was not popularized the way it was around the world by Zango as a commercial product. There's just no way that in a couple of hundred years of um, people knowing about it locally and in the areas where it's grown, that it could have left borders and been in Russia and been around the world the way it is now, with scientists interested in it. Remember, the scientists only get interested when they start seeing people have results that the doctors can't explain, then they go looking for the reason behind it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and Fred, when you talk about research and, have, and the, the, the scientific investigations that go on, talk about what the impact is of science. Why is science looking at mangosteen? What is it that interests them? And then what would be their purpose in pursuing research on mangosteen? Okay, well, let's, let's take a look at the misused term of superfruit. Now, this was a term coined by Dr. Morton. Uh, in 2004 and picked up by so many other things that entered the botanical market saying that they were superfoods. But no scientists are interested in them. And after a little bump and a few papers, in every, in every case, they have moved on into obscurity. And what keeps the activity going is the fact that the scientific research which is done turns out to have positive results and it's a positive feedback cycle and more breeds more. Now, when you have a negative feedback cycle, you drift out of the picture, the way many of these other botanicals have. But the mangosteen has not drifted out of the picture. In fact, what is driving this research is the desire to have a drug. And in Japan, there already is a prodrug, which is out there being used in research and also in therapeutics. And five other countries, five countries in total, sorry, four plus Japan, have already synthesized the key ingredients in the mango steam that are not available in any other thing, any other supplement called xanthones. And they're doing this because they want to make drugs out of it. Well, if something doesn't work in its natural state, you don't try and make a drug out of it. And in this particular case, the mango steam is inspiring enthusiastic scientific research in large numbers of universities in order to be able to get them uh, so where they're shooting, you know, they're looking for a drug. And there will be drugs. I predict that within the period of the requirements for approval and testing that there will be at least four drugs in three different categories that are derived from the magnesium. And if I were a Zango distributor, Zango juice drinker, consumer, lover like I am, how would uh, how, how does that information affect me? What should I be thinking about as that uh, as those things come to pass? Well, what is the mango steam eventually in a drug? Well, it becomes the mango steam slightly adulterated by the side chains that the synthesizers have put on it, and so you now have something magnificent that has side effects and problems. So the mango steam in its pure form. And uh, I would argue with anyone that mangosteen is in its purest form in Zango. So in Zango, you have all of the benefits, and you don't have any of the eventual defects that will come from drugs being out there. Beautiful. And that, that really is the basis. Like you say, there's no interest if it's not working. There's no interest if there's a negative feedback loop. But because people are having positive results, it leads to more research. And then the research, as it has positive results, leads to more research and more studies. And like you say, the synthesization, synthesization, faking, I'm going to call it the faking of a natural <laughs> for the sake of profit. Yeah. And, and here we are with something that, with a 12-year history of Zango juice and the Zango company, that background and that support is unprecedented. People are, are able to get access to the phenomenon that is xanthones in the specific, like you say, the purest possible form of that fruit. And here it is available for us at a really reasonable price with some incredible benefits attached to it. Yeah, the juice itself 
Dave, is uh, bringing about results in so many things. Now, we can't make any claims with regard to disease because simply the kind of research that is required to do that is too costly and not necessary as long as you can show results. And anybody who's ever had anything that ends in ITIF has probably derived benefit. You make a great point. You were talking about that earlier today. Talk a little bit about what that ITIS really stands for. How does that associate with everyone listening in? Well, when you look at the over 500 papers that are listed on PubMed, the majority of them have to do with serious illness and disease and something we can't even say, the big C, and that, that's what most of the research is about. However, everything else is lumped into an area where the largest single other category is inflammation. And inflammation is, in, in a chronic sense, inflammation is the underpinning of so many chronic illnesses that they end up having ITIS at the end of them. So arthritis, any kind of ITIS, gastritis, any kind of ITIS, uh, the myositis, they're all there. When you have ITIS, that simply means Inflammation is the problem. And we, we've had people report great results uh, with those specific things. So we're excited that it's still available through Zango and that the juice, and it's, like you say, the unadulterated form, the purest form, and the most widely available, and frankly, the best tasting. I'll go ahead and say it. I'm unbiased, and people know that. But it really it is the greatest possible answer right now. And I, I, I get excited every time I take it because not only does it taste good, and I've been drinking it now myself for 10 years, but I still enjoy it. I look forward to my Zango juice. We, we fight if it's at the end of the bottle at home. Have you brought back more Zango juice from work? Then you don't get it, dear. That's what I hear from my sweet wife. So we want to make sure that that stays available. Uh, Fred, uh, I appreciate that insight on Zango juice. Now let's jump over really quickly. Talk about Limitless for a second. We've got a big uh, uh, impetus on Limitless and certainly just in pop culture, there are references to things around energy drinks and all the things that people think they need so that they can have energy or focus. Let's talk about Zango's offering with something we call Limitless. Well, I needed to be uh, sharp today to be able to come on and do this call, recall things. And so I took a Limitless about a half an hour ago. The reason I did that is because I'm, by the way, I'm sitting in a chair. So I want to make this point. I am not up jumping in a gym. I'm not running on a treadmill. I'm not climbing bars. What I'm doing is sitting in a chair, very animated, with mental acuity that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't had the limitless a half an hour ago. And I want to point out that I believe firmly that the impact of limitless is equally great on mental acuity, memory, and recall as it is in the body when we head to the gym. When you look at the seven ingredients that are in there, basic coal, gamma, panic, ginseng, the green tree, these are all things that have very important, along with mango seeds, that have very important contributions to make with the way your mind works and how much more nimble you are when you're actually getting an assist that doesn't just help your muscles through the adrenal glands, but also picks up everything else. And the interesting thing, and we've done this before, pointing out the uh, things that aren't in the product that are harmful, this is done safely. So you've got yourself a boost, you have it for both lift of mind and body, and you do it safely. That, that's a, a great point to bring up. A lot of what we've talked about in the early stages of Limitless, and it's been out a couple of years now, I think we're coming up on two years, but a lot of the attention that it gets, especially on social media or some of our events or some of uh, uh, things you see, whether it's our posting it or, or distributors and, and uh, consumers posting about it, they're talking about the results they get from a physical standpoint. They're saying, I went to the gym, I was able to max out my, my weight or I got higher reps or I was able to, uh, to have more endurance or I was, I was able to accomplish more, like you say, from a physical standpoint. But we're talking now about the what you have mentioned, and you are the medical professional here. This is not Dave Webb making a, 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 a scarce marketing claim. We're talking about the equal opportunity for the mental acuity to have a benefit there, and that, that's fascinating. Well, anybody who wants to, to run off to Wikipedia or some other source for information and look up GoToCola, look up GABA, look up Panax Ginseng, look up Mangosteen, and you'll see that there is a serious impact there on mental processes 
as well as physical endurance. And, you know, the other day I went to my son's house, and sometimes it's kind of hard to get these younger people to pay attention to the arrival of their parents, but he was playing a video game, and I, I spoke to him, and he didn't, he just waved me off with his hand, and then got back and he was with the keyboard, because he was concentrating on something, and uh, I, I could have given him a limit list, he could probably have done better. As a matter of fact, when, when I think about gaming, it's probably the absolutely perfect way to test whether Limitless will make a difference for you. Because there's finger dexterity, it certainly isn't weightlifting, but it's finger dexterity, so there's the physical aspect, and it certainly is mental acuity. And even more interesting, you can score yourself, you can actually compete against yourself, or you can compete against others, but you can see your performance improve. So I think that... Uh, you know, it, it really is something that at this time of year, hello students who are out there writing their finals, it's probably extremely important for people to use legitimate steps up when it comes to performance. Whether you're a you know, student or you're a soccer mom or you're an executive who's got a presentation, just up a little bit of a lift and do it better. That, that's a great way to put it. I appreciate it. I'm, it's funny you talked about the, the gaming aspect. We have a gentleman who has been with our MB30 movement, and uh, he's got some success with the product and with the experience and with the business. Interestingly, it is through his online gaming activity that he has sponsored three competitors within the last few weeks. <laughs> I mean, he's like talking to these guys, no, I feel great. I'm doing, you know, you have your chats while you're doing the game. I don't know if it's if it's a killing game, a hunting, a seeking, a, a revolutionary war hero, a French Revolution thing. I don't know what the whole thing is. I've got kids myself, and I, I, I cannot pretend to comprehend all that they can process on a screen and then be typing and texting and chatting at the same time. But this kid, I'm going to call him a kid because I'm 50, and I get to say that about anyone who is not 50. This kid went out and in the process of gaming with the headset on, watching the big screen, doing whatever you do, teaming up, pairing, comparing, whatever it is, has sponsored three new Limitless customers because of his experience while gaming. And I, I bet he watched his scores go up, and he thought, I don't know if he thought this, but he, he could have said, my mental acuity is off the charts. And now I have some charts that can tell me where my mental acuity is. So I love that. Okay, Fred, let's wrap up the product section. Give us a quick okay. on, on Zalo Ageless, if you will. Okay, well, we're in a good position to do a, 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 you know, a, an important review on Zalo Ageless because it's been out for a while. Now, in the anti-aging category, there are literally dozens of products out there. And people spend their money sometimes when they see buzzwords. And that's not where the proof is. The proof is really in the pudding. And when the, the Zalo Ageless first came on the market, I was afraid that perhaps most people would not experience an immediate benefit. Now, that didn't turn out to be true, and most people, like I do, get a buzz within about 40 minutes of taking an actual tingling in the, in the periphery that is an indication of vasodilatation and the effects of some of the ingredients that are in there. But the ingredients that were chosen for the Zalo Ageless were chosen not because of any kind of immediate effect, but the long-term effects that would, that would interfere with the aging process in a beneficial way. Now, the product itself was formulated looking at the three major theories of aging, and there are a number of them out there, but it was largely the mitochondrial theory of aging. Anybody wants to look at that, they go out and find out about mitochondria, which are the little subcellular organelles that uh, convert food to energy, and which disappear with age and become less efficient with age. And this was conceived in order to work at the cellular level to help with the rejuvenation and the sparing from damage of the mitochondria. And the ingredients in it are really, really like a hit list of tremendous uh, herbal products. We've got the mangosteen there. We already talked about that. But we have something called Samijin, which is a stalwart of the Ayurvedic medical tradition. And it was called actually a panacea because it covers the whole spectrum. And the interesting thing about it is like with the mangosteen 12 years ago, when there wasn't much known about it, as people used it and got better, the scientists became interested, and they found out that what they were testing from the traditional medical tradition was coming, was, was being demonstrated in reality in the clinical changes that people were having. Well, that's what's happening with this region. Every time that they have tested it to see if it would do what it says, it does. 
And we also have leachy polyphenols. Now, these have been rendered about 400 times more uh, effective in terms of bioavailability than they were in their unchanged form. We've got leucine, which is the amino acid, which is the rate limiting factor on how muscle is preserved, made, and repaired. We have uh, got GABA, and again, I talked about GABA uh, in Limitless, but GABA is also extremely important because it's a major neurotransmitter. And these are things which decline with age. And so keeping up an exogenous source of GABA seems to make all the sense in the world to me. We have grapeseed and grape skin extracts, and we've got a whole story cardiovascularly and otherwise about them. We have aloe vera. We've got Primitus terrestris, which is one of the nicest adaptogens out there on the market because it has virtually no side effects and works at raising the levels of things that need to come up and lower.